So you've bought your interlock CPU and when on installing you're having some issues with it and there are a number of caveats I have discovered which did not exist when well, weren't shown or was, wasn't aware of when I bought the card um, because it was a little bit obscure and a bit hidden away. Uh, one thing you may find when you go to install a card and you install the drivers is you end up with a blank screen. Um, if you have if you've, uh, anything beyond the standard Windows drivers, as soon as you start to install, you'll get a blank screen. Um, if you've got some remote control software with enabled remote desktop support, and you can use another machine to RDP to this one, you'll find things like there'll be a um, warning sign next to the graphic sign, uh, Graphic, graphics adapter and it will tell you that uh, if you look at it it will be disabled it's, it would have disabled um, you can try to reinstall it but it <coughs> won't work uh, if you look at the event logs for the device so basically if you look at the properties of the device and um, you would normally get being the general but if you go to events uh, you'll get a, a bunch of errors. You can do a view all events, uh, which you get you up a page, something like this. You may see errors similar to this. Um, it talks about uh, trying to migrate PCI devices. Uh, this was from Monday the 20th when I was uh, finally worked out what was going on quite late in the evening. Um, but you'll get you'll get errors. Uh, there was a few other errors, but it looks like my event log has gone off, um, has been cleaned up beyond a week. So should we increase the size? Uh, you'll get some really odd errors. Uh, you'll have a device identity, which is here. Uh, but if you have a look, uh, you'll get errors with display dot um, and it will moan about a number of different things. Um, as we can see here. Now, a lot of these issues come down to uh, some things which the graphics card or the InterArc graphics card don't support, which is a bit annoying for me, but it uh, possibly won't be for most people, but it depends what's enabled in the BIOS. So what we can do is, if we have a look at the BIOS settings, uh, let me just find an image I've got open of it. Um, so picture I took of it. Uh, on AMD uh, in the uh, UEFI BIOS settings, so you can get to this via F2 or F4. Um, I can normally it's normally one of those you'll have to hit on turn on or stuff. Uh, you'll get under advanced um, and you'll get SVM, which is basically virtualization extensions. So this allows you to run things like uh, Hyper-V, which is Microsoft's virtualization environment, which sits as a subsystem on Windows. So do virtual machines. Uh, this is probably going to affect other things like VMware, um, and a couple others, or if you are using the Linux subsystem for Windows, this also won't work, as it's discovered. So what it comes down to is a bunch of these hardware errors we're sawing about to uh, see about things not being installed correctly, is Intel Arc CPUs do not support virtualization extensions being enabled um, certainly not on amd and on intel I'm not so sure there may be some circumstances where you can do it but it doesn't seem to be the case um, the other issue is to get the full usage of cpu uh, i'll say the gpu uh, you need resizable bar, which there's a bit of a settings up here for resizable bar. Now, uh, there is an, also an issue with this is you cannot do resizable bar 
if um, your disk is actually set to uh, basic. So uh, it needs to be a GPT disk for resizable bar. And the other thing which is also required is, let's find the screenshot for it. Um, for GPT disks, you also need to have uh, CSM, the compatibility support module disabled, and the device control should be UFE only. But to do UFE only requires a GPT disk. Now, depending on the version of Windows, there are ways of converting to GPT disks, which I'm not going to do here at the moment. Um, I'll show, although I do have another SSD installed, which I'm probably going to look at copying everything across to it, and I'll make this, uh, this is an M2 SSD, so I'll probably make this the actual boot device, uh, so rather than destroying my original disks. So that is a bit of an annoyance. There's other annoyances I've also found, which is... Um, if you've got a multi-monitor setup, you'll find you'll get a power on, which would be similar to. Let me find the screenshot. This one. Um, well, start up. Interesting enough, uh, the right-hand monitor should be device um, screen zero, so the first device. But we get a Windows boot for some bizarre reason on the left-hand screen. Now, the follow-up issue to that is that when it actually turns on or when it for um, oh, let me find the other window I'm looking for you can suddenly find in this case um, sorry about the sun reflecting off the back but that's when I took the pictures um, it will go to the right hand screen or screens over here and then what happens is it powers off the left hand window so you will get to your boot screen, which I shall find the image from momentarily, like this one. Whoops, not that one. Which I shall find in a moment. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So I took, sure I took a screen grab of it. Oh yeah, this one here. Uh, you'll go to your Windows login screen, which generally does appear on one screen, but your left-hand screen, or in this case, the secondary screen, will be off. Um, and even when you actually log in, it still remains off. And then what I've actually found I had to do is, uh, in this case, the one of the monitor cables, the uh, DisplayPort cables I've got, um, which I purchased didn't actually work. Um, so I'm gonna have to send it back because it seems it's been badly made and produces screen corruption. So I've just used a HDMI um, cable and uh, with a converter here, but I found that for, to actually pick up the screens, it's actually having to unplug and replug in a cab uh, this cable, at which point it will then um, pick up our second screen. So this seems to be a bit of annoyance and I'll, I guess there's a bug somewhere in the uh, display driver settings or possibly in the ArcGPU, which even doesn't lose its connection to here. I'll have to try it with the display port as well, but it's a bit of annoyance. Um, and again, a resizable bar, uh, it will show up in the Intel Arc control panel in the settings here. And yeah, it doesn't really work. So there are annoyances. The virtualization I do use or would have used, but I can't now. Um, or if I enable it, I'll have to do a remote control to this PC to actually then be able to use virtualization, which is really annoying. So Intel needs to sort their life out because how, how can you produce a graphics card which doesn't have virtualization support i mean come on it's it's, it's ridiculous everybody else the uh all the other cards don't have a problem with it 
And what it moans about is when you have virtualization enabled, uh, basically you get a load of PCI bus errors, but you only get those PCI bus errors when the Intel graphics driver is installed. If you've got the standard basic Windows driver, it doesn't. Uh, so annoying. But I'll see, we'll see if uh, Intel actually release some bits about it. They've People moaned at them about it on the forums and basically they've closed down the ticket saying, oh, you're not talking about it anymore, therefore it must be a closed problem. So it's something obviously they know about but don't want to do. So if you want to use virtualization, do not buy an Intel Arc graphics card. Thank you.